So, hello everyone, and welcome to another tutorial. Um, you might have already seen the sneak peek. I know it's already been a week or two. Um, I had some other stuff um, that I had to work on, but um, I kind of slipped this tutorial in the middle um, before the compositing tutorial that I am still planning on doing, so um, stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, so, what you can see on my screen now is what we're about to do. We are going to to make the Star Trek warp in effect from Star Trek Discovery. There are like every series has a slightly different one. Um, I just chose Star Trek Discovery because it's the most um, quote unquote advanced, uh, like for um, for like visual effects because obviously they have a huge visual effects budget. Um, um, whatever you might think about the series, I think personally the, the visual effects are uh, pretty good. <laughs> whatever. Uh, anyway, so we're going to make this. Um, and I'm also going to show you a quick bonus how to make the star background, as you can see. Um, this is not an HDRI, this is completely procedural. Um, of course, an HDRI would look better, but um, I'll just take the chances, uh, take a chance of doing such a tutorial and show you that as well because the effect in itself is not very complicated and um, we just need to, to figure out a few EV settings also this one has no compositing at all I'm going to pause it it's annoying uh, maybe yeah um so it's um it's very simple so let's just jump right in so um you'll need the same discovery model as from last tutorial I put the link in the last tutorial I'll just um pop a link um right now in like an info card where you can watch the last tutorial where you also get um, the file for this spaceship. Um, so let's open Blender and let's start doing it. Loading all the scripts. I have a lot of add-ons, I always enable them. Just slows on the launch a little bit. <laughs> so, um, we don't need we don't need a new file, um, or I guess we could work. No, let's make a new file. Okay, so I'm going to make a new file and delete everything. And I'm going to first I'm going to append something because um, I'm going to append the discovery model I have. So um, this is a nice feature. You can like get objects and materials and everything from another blend file by using append, very nice. Also, yes, I should enable screencast keys. Um, I'm, I'm going to do that in a moment. So object and discovery merge, I think what I need. And let's append and boom, let's um, center it. So I think they, I'm not sure if they, the textures come with, the, with it or not. Let me see. I hope they do, else it's gonna be a bit tedious. Okay, looks, looks like it. And also let me disable immune occlusion, it always lags and we don't need it um, right now for the final render. So, okay, we got the discovery. Um, now let's just do a quick lighting setup because currently we have none. First of all, turn the color um, I always like to put it at one and then you can use the strength slider. So I'll just put the strength to zero because it's space, obviously. And in space, there is no light. <laughs> I mean, you can turn it up a tiny bit if you want. I mean, it's even not technically zero. Let's make it 0 0.01 maybe. It doesn't make a difference, whatever. Yeah, no. It has a bit of light. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty dark, um, like it would be in real life. But since um, visual effects, are an augmentation of real life, we can just add an area light. I love area lights. They are so nice. Scale up and in the Y direction. Oh. So uh, let me now enable screencast keys. Um, um, oh, I'll, I'll be back if I find it out. So now I've got screencast keys, so it should work now. Um, Wonderful. Um, we have the area light, so we just continue where we are. 
maybe it's a bit too big. You, you, you can tell me how it looks in the end. I'm still experimenting. So, yeah, maybe it's better. So, okay, so we were just put up to 10 kilowatts or something. Wonderful. So uh, the materials are already set up, everything. And now let's get to the juicy part. Um, so in order to make this warp in animation, we have to create a duplicate of discovery. So um, how it basically works, we have the duplicate of discovery flying in. That's the blue glow. It's I mean technically you could also like set up the materials and animate the nodes, but that's too complicated. So let's just create a duplicate of it. And now um, I sadly don't have the video anymore where, where I, I could show you. Um, how it like actually looks in the series, but um, it kind of looks uh, as if the different parts of the vessel are kind of separated. So um, there's like there are like gaps in the warp signature or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what this means for us <laughs> um, is that we have to like cut this second discovery into small pieces. So um, the nacelles are one piece, and uh, okay, that's what we're going to do. What seven. We'll just keep it like that and yeah rotate please so good now um we're just going to cut away like chunks of the ship you know um it doesn't have to be pretty it really doesn't have to be um nobody's going to to rate this so we're just going to cut the way delete vertices wonderful boom Maybe that's too much. Let's uh, delete faces. Um, yeah, let's um, delete the rest of those faces as well. Um, let's just get this one. Delete faces. Yeah, this face we don't need anyway. anyway. Delete faces, yes. So, same for the other side. I know it looks janky, but it's going to look to look good. Um, trust me, trust me. So you basically just go on and carving through the ship. Let's uh, activate X-ray again. Problem with deleting faces in X-ray is that not every face is targeted, so it's just like um, it's like the midpoint of the face, and sometimes that's just not what you want. Then um, on the other hand, it's kind of like this middle part is missing as well, and that's not so obvious. Um, but um, because especially from different camera angles, you might not even really see it. But it's gone. Um, also, like the inner ring is gone. So, it's luckily it's its, its own object. So you can just um, yeah, get rid of it, and and take care of the rest. Basically carving down the ship, you know. And if it's not pretty, it doesn't really matter. Also, what you can do use for this, you can press the W key to switch between selection modes. So you can use the circle selection, and then just paint basically. Oh, yes. And hold shift. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you can just paint on there and then you just eat faces. Boom. So now we get this. We just still gotta get rid of um, the middle part here. And we just paint over it. Wonderful. So everything's covered. And then you press delete or X, whatever. Um, side yeah not pretty no problem so we got our um, <laughs> pretty nasty looking version of, <laughs> of the ship but that's exactly what we need because now um, we are going to continue and we're going to materials now here and we're going to delete, we're going to delete every material until yeah everyone now let's create a new one and let's just name it globe so, so I don't know what it is globe and what we need to do here is um, we technically don't even need the principal BSDF, but what I kind of like to do is mix emission and diffuse. So we get the emission to like 100 or something. And also, yeah, you might have to turn the bloom down. Um, so it's kind of this blue shade they have. Wonderful. So yeah, that's pretty strong. Maybe, maybe let's go. Let's go 75 or something. And yeah, you can turn the bloom down or off if you want to composite it afterwards. But now I'm just going to turn bloom off because that's easier. And then you can see that kind of the shadow regions are different colors. And sometimes it's a really nice effect because you can 
make the PSDF here, you can change these values. You can make it like 10 or something. And then of course it's impossible physically, but it kind of reflects more light now than it's, than it's getting. That's how you understand it. So now um, if we reduce this down to like 25, you can see at the top, it's a different glow than the bottom. Of course, not extreme, um, but it can be very nice. Um, now you can see it kind of mixes weirdly, whatever. So um, I kind of, kind of like to do this and maybe 20 is too much. Let's go 15 or 10 and yeah, very nice. Okay, so we got this, we got our bloom. I uh, got everything. I'm going to reduce intensity a bit. Um, of course, the compositing tutorial that is coming up, I promise, will also get you through there. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, so, um, don't forget to subscribe and like so you won't miss out on the next tutorials. Good. Now we have both discoveries. Uh, that is just loaded in. And they're kind of merging. <laughs> but um, the point is, what can happen is because they technically are the same model, they can start Z fighting. Right now it's not really happening, but, but um, it can happen, it happened to me. So what I would just like to do in order to fix this is I'm just going to go S and then you scale up very slightly, just like a tiny bit. Now it's like 1.005. Uh, not much, but it prevents all the Z fighting and like screen space re reflection issues um, afterwards. Good, so now what you want to do is you want to parent them. You can parent them to empty, that's what I'm going to do because it makes it easier afterwards. Um, I like to use the cube empty for that. Um, because I can like put it into the shape of the ship actually, and then it's uh, it's a bit easier. Good. And now um, let's make this a USSD or something so I can know what it is. And let's parent those. Object. So now if I, if, I, if I move the cube around, ships follow. That's the point. Now um, let's animate the ships. So um, we need a timeline now. Uh, so get out the timeline. By default, it should, by default, it should be already there. And for this animation, I think we're just choosing like, it's just like five seconds or something. How long is it? Yeah, it's um, two seconds only. So let's just make it like 70 frames. I think that's what I had, 70 frames. Um, that's 2.333 seconds. Um, so at the end of the animation, kind of let's say frame 60, we want it to be at the current location. So let's go and insert location keyframe and at the beginning, we wanted to obviously be somewhere else. Um, I think we can put that down to like 40. Because the animation is actually really, really short. It's just like three frames, I think, in the original and like in the actual series. So let's go to like 20, frame 20. And let's GY and let's move it. Yeah, like, like there. I and location. So now you can see it kind of moves in. I'm sure, I think we can tweak it later if we see it's not fast enough. Um, also, make sure to enable motion blur, else it won't look good. And also, shutter, put it to one, or that's kind of a trick, put it to 1.5. Technically, it's more motion blur than physically possible, but um, that's okay. And the maximum blur amount, uh, because you want it to blur the maximum blur amount, let's just set it to like 1000 so it doesn't clip, that's the point. Steps. Keep that at one because unless you want to go to like 20, um, it just makes it worse. Uh, <laughs> in this case, I already tried that. Um, so now let's add a camera, um, shift A. And adding, adding a camera. You can now focus the camera on the point where you're looking while playing control, alt and numpad zero. Then the camera snaps to your view. And now you can see how it looks. Um, yeah, very nice. Um, now what I like to do, it's, uh, it's um, animated. So we can take um, 
the cubes already animate, so now we have to, to animate this one, the glowing discovery. And what we want to animate first is actually the visibility, because you may not have known, but you can animate that as well. So you go here, I think, visibility, and then you have shown viewports and renders. You can, have just, you can animate both or just renders. I think I'm just going to animate renders right now because um, else it's a bit just more tedious. Um, so at frame 60, no, at frame 40, it has to be invisible. So that's um, renders and viewports. You can, you can animate both invisible. And before that, let's say it. Yeah, um, it turns visible frame 39. And let's animate that as well. So now you can see it comes in and invisible right off the bat. That's what we want. Right, um, so still it's a bit, um, also that you see it's blocky, that's because of the viewport denoising, whatever. Um, you see it's kind of abrupt and we don't want that. So um, first of all, I personally think it's, um, it's uh, we had, it has to appear like maybe one frame earlier or something. So also that's kind of annoying. I wish they fi fixed that in Blender at some point that if you move the keyframes past, um, you know, what, what you actually are, it becomes invisible and unselectable, then you automatically cancel it anymore. So technically it should be a last step. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, so you can now see it animates in and it becomes invisible here. It becomes invisible at frame 37. So now we can animate the emission strength. Um, so you just press in here and I, no, huh, we're off it. You just hold your mouse and then you press I to animate it exactly. Now you have added an animation keyframe right here. And we want the emission to be much stronger in the beginning. So let's make it to like 200 maybe. So it's gonna let's press I again. Oh, no, wrong. You can click keyframe and here, press I. And now you can see it's much stronger and it becomes less strong as it goes. So, very simple. So for me personally, this animation is not fast enough. So I'm going to go to frame 20 and to the cube and I'm going to move it back even more and change to update the keyframe. So now it's coming in quicker. Let's go to camera and see how it looks. Mm. Maybe a bit too much. Let's just make it maybe 50 meters. You just have to tweak it until you like it. I think, yeah, that's where I'll leave it. And to test how it looks, you can just press F12 and you can see how it looks. Um, so that's basically the preview. Again, you can add compositing. Um, I will show you that at, um, in the next tutorial. So um, now, that can be, um, now it's not important, but it can be important. Um, in the series, it's actually like trans transparent at the, um, where it doesn't glow. So the last step would just be to animate the visibility of the other discovery, of the one, the actual ship. And um, you want it to maybe become visible here. So let's keyframe the visibility here, or um, keyframe it invisible here, update the keyframes and Next frame, let's say it is visible. And then, yeah, so now let's look at it. See, um, here it's actually still transparent. If you press a 12, again, you won't see it because it's all blurred, so that that's why it doesn't matter how, how crappy the job you did. And then here, it does become visible here. And you can see kind of that ship lights going through. That's the other thing, the ship lights itself, of course, they aren't as strong uh, as maybe you want them to be. So that's as the last maybe thing. I'm not sure if they actually do that, but it looks nice. That you can, there is a material for the luminance and you can tell, um, you can also keyframe that. So you can go 
here i emission strength where you want it to be normal which is when it stops at frame 40 maybe at frame 42 and you go here and you like crank it up like a gazillion you know like 10,000 something 1,000 whatever a lot that's the point and then here you can see it's very bright if i render it it's actually yeah you can see it's more visible more pronounced and uh, it's going to of course wear down but then you can see here press f12 that you can see it kind of through and um, this will just sell the effect a bit more and so that's basically how you do it and now for the stars that's the bonus bonus round technically you're done right now you can render the animation uh, maybe enable ambient occlusion if you want increase the samples whatever and you render it but i promised you to show you how to make the stars so i'm going to do that and for that you switch to world and find find the node um so we had this before that's okay but not, well, not great um so the point is we um can use um the different uh, types of noise that blender provides and um we are going to use Veroni noise. And I don't know if you know how it's actually calculated, but it's calculated by basically by taking a bunch of circles and spraying them across a plane and just calculating the distance to the nearest circle. That's how it works. And you might have spotted there, circles, um, we're going to make stars. Stars are circular, so that's very nice. Um, so very convenient, I should say, uh, to use. So now let's just um, shift A and get the Veronoi texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on, press Control T to get the mapping. And now let's just plug this into the color and strength to one so you can see it. So now you can kind of see already the circles and you can switch between F1, F2, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're going to use F1 because that's the original, like the proper Veronoi. 2D, we can't use, <laughs> we're going to use 3D, and now we're going to just increase the scale. It's going to tell you how many stars we have. Um, and the randomness, yeah, you can see a grid. That's basically how it works. It, it, it takes a lot of, it takes a grid and just displays this at, at randomly. So you can even kind of, yeah, whatever. Uh, maximum randomness. And now we just plug in a color ramp node. That's all we have to do. And color ramp. I like to use two color ramps. Um, one for the color and, and one for just the light clamping. Because of course, um, we have to first switch black and white. Because, yeah, now you can see we can create these circles. And we can create the size. The size we can control by moving this around. You can see also they all kind of have different sizes it's because it's, it's 3D and they are in space. Um, it looks it looks a, a lot more interesting actually if it's inverted. Um, but now let's just take it down until we have star sized shapes. Okay. So now we have this and. Everything that's black is going to stay black, of course, but then we're going to just add one that's almost black. So, and that's going to be maybe a red dwarf. So it's going to be red. And then we're going to have a type G star, I think, our sun. So we can do that, type G star. Um, let's just keep that for our sun. Let's just make like a, a blue star, like a really bright one. Decrease the saturation, you know? Also, you can see it's kind of you have to, yeah, just make it so it looks good and increase the strength to like 15 or something. You want to see how the stars turn out, maybe 10. And yeah, you have a lot of stars. Um, looks very good. Personally, I like it. Got a star background, you can change the colors, you can make purple stars if you like. And now it's a bit less boring in the background. Um, so that's how you do it. Um, 
It's going to render this out. And you can see, you can add some camera movement like I did. Uh, but basically, that's how you make the warp in effect. I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial and um, as, as well as I enjoyed making it. And so if you're interested in knowing how to get this model and maybe how to make the shield effect from Star Trek, you can watch my last tutorial where I explained just that. But for, anyone, for everyone else, um, I hope you still have a great day. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like the tutorial and also like the video. And until I make the next one, bye-bye.